It is held in an arena known for its athletic competition. But on this day, inside these doors, the competition is different. It is complex. It's energizing, even if you don't quite understand it. This is the Bloomington Jefferson team. Now, now what went into this robot? Um, it went into six weeks of building the robot. What was that process like? It was really, really, really stressful. We took long nights uh, sitting at home or at school from when we went to school in the morning until after school until like 9 o'clock, uh, putting everything together, working, blood and tears. But to understand how they build them, you have to understand why they build them. It started with a vision to reinvigorate, to add something sexy to science. This program started in the early 90s by a guy named Dean Kamen, and most people know him because he invented the Segway. But what he noticed is that we weren't celebrating science and technology. So he said, we got to do that, we got to change that, so let's celebrate it. So he used the sports model, and he created a program where you have robots competing against robots, and they get pretty sophisticated now, 20 years later, and these kids are on the playing field competing with robots like sports teams would be out playing football or basketball or baseball or any of the other sports. And what came out of it was more of an appetite than anyone anticipated. Schools and students gravitated to building robots, to spending their time creating something with one another. I was on the science team at school, and almost everyone on the science team was on the robotics team, so I thought, why not join? And what has it been like? Amazing. That's what became amazing. A desire to do something that they could take pride in, something they could put their signature on. This is the Simley team. Now, what is this robot going to do? This robot climbs 10 points and also shoots three-point baskets. It shoots three-point baskets? It does. Accurately? Yes, accurately. Have you talked to the Timberwolves? No. <laughs> <laughs> but the fuel to create needed another component, funding. And it's not cheap. So they set out to find sponsors. In the process, they got an idea of the real world. We have a $5,000 registration fee for the teams and that gets in the robot parts and participation at a regional competition. We found if we can find an anchor sponsor such as these large organizations to cover that registration fee, they can figure out the rest through their own fundraising. The rest to cover travel, to cover coaching stipends, to cover food for the kids during the after hours. Which is a part session. of what you want them to go through, right? I mean, Absolutely. you want them to raise, you want Absolutely. to know that they're serious yeah. about this, that they care, that they're not just showing up when they want to show up, that it means something to them. Absolutely. That's part of what makes the combination. It's science, it's teamwork, it's entrepreneurialism, and it is oh so interesting. They are learning skills that they don't even realize will pay dividends and the fuel is that there is competition, a motivating force that takes shape. You know, I think everybody is naturally competitive, and if you give them the right problem, they'll go solve it. So we set the bar really high, and we have to set the bar really high because there's teams that have been around since the mid-90s, and then we've got, this year, we've got 24 rookie teams in Minnesota. We have to have a game that the rookies can play and compete with, and the most experienced teams can play and compete with. It is not really scoreboard driven, it is more cerebral, more complicated. The judges, what they're doing is, there's criteria for each award. For example, creativity is one of the awards that we give out. These are all subjective awards, they're, they're not things that we can measure. So what does this robot do? All right, our robot is offensive and defensive this year. So that means we can actually go up and block other teams' shots as they're shooting from like a lower area to the high goals and we intercept their discs, bring them down, and we dump them off in the first goal to score our points. Just to give you a quick tour of the robot, it can hold four Frisbees, and what happens here is Sid, our human player, will put a Frisbee in this slot. This sensor will detect a Frisbee, and this arm will spin around, and ultimately there'll be four Frisbees, one here, one here, one here, and then one in the chamber. Once there's one in the chamber, this shooter wheel underneath the deck will spin up to about 1600 RPMs and a tiny little servo arm here will kick it out and the frisbee will go flying out to the top goal. We aim by using this little camera here and we programmed a crosshair into it so I can aim very easily. They want to make their own name, prove that they can work together, prove that they are skilled. We have two hooks for hanging on a pyramid. The level that we hang on is the 30, 30 inches high so we have to get these hooks over 30 inches and then bring them back down to lift our whole 140 pound robot on, up off the ground. We prototyped many different designs for our shooter. Uh, one was linear, where it shot the Frisbee in a linear motion. 
And the next one is the one that we have right now on our robot, which is a flywheel and a curve shooter. And we concluded that the curve shooter had more power and put more dis distance on the disc as it was shot out. You get the feeling robotics is still in its infancy stages. It's been approved by the high school league. It's growing in leaps and bounds. And it is filling a void for kids with different skill sets that want to participate in a team activity. You know, there's kids that are obviously the kids that like gaming and programming computers, but you also get the tickers, the kids that like to build things, take things apart, build them up. And then you get kids that like marketing. You know, each team is like a little corporation and they market their team to other teams. So when it comes time to, to get into the playoffs and because of this peculiar format that we have, they want to market themselves to other teams so they get chosen for the playoffs. They're having a ball doing it, gaining an education because of it and inspiring the generation that came before them as they perform it. Maybe the most important parts are not the competition, but the things that you learn about life. And this is like a segment of real life. I mean, you, you have constraints, you never have enough time, you never have enough of everything to do what you want, and yet you gotta figure it out. Life to the Max is brought to you by LifeTouch, photography for a lifetime.